Okay, so we, we, we finally have a, a, an answer for what is fat activism. Mm -hmm. And this answer I like very much. We're going to share it uh, with the audience. Anyway, so what fat activism is for me, um, I've been thinking and about and working on the question, what is fat activism daily? Not very much for the past sort of 25 years or so, you know. I still don't have an easy answer. Um, and it's a question that I came to in my master's dissertation, which was published as my book, Fat and Proud, in 1998, which was ages ago now. And I returned to it for my PhD, which was a four-year research project that I finished last November. And during that project, I interviewed about 30 fat activists around the world, people of all different backgrounds and perspectives, many of whom had decades of experience in, in uh, fat activism. And nobody gave me a consistent answer about what it actually is. Because they were chewing. And so given this, it made sense to me that fat activism can be absolutely anything. It just really depends on the context. Well, I like that. And this makes fat activism really exciting because Indeed. it means you can tailor it. <laughs> you can tailor it to what you're interested in. Yes. Or the things that you enjoy or the things that you're good at or yes. very, very specific moments in your life. Yes. And so I kind of thought that so fat activism could be So if I'm just being be fat some... and rude and nasty in the lobby of a hotel because I've come down a few minutes after the, the breakfast has ended and I'm really giving it to the people that work there and I'm giving it to them good. Is that, this sounds like that is fat activism. Well, I like that. If I throw a fit at Enterprise Rent-A-Car because the car they gave me is what I consider to be uh, too small, that is fat activism. I'm now coming around to this and enjoying it. Let's let's watch a little more. Something really big, like a street protest, that's the thing that most people think of as activism when I talk to people about it, or a letter-writing campaign, that kind of thing. And it can be as small as a wink, a wink directed at the right person at the right time. Yes. Well, that's that I, that I like. What she's basically saying is we don't need these street protests where everybody has to walk and chafe but a wink, a well-placed wink, <laughs> is fat activism. Wink, I will wink and make people uncomfortable, and I think that's a good barrier of entry. It's low. So the idea is that a well-placed wink to the right person is fat activism. So let's say, okay, if I, and I've actually done this, right? I've been in 7-Eleven. And I was eating the Big Un. The Big Un is a cheeseburger that you heat in the microwave. <laughs> and you take it out of its wrapper. And I've been with the Big Un in 7-Eleven eating it, you know, putting the pickles from the condiment bar on the Un mm -hmm. and squeezing ketchup on it and biting it. And if I choose to wink at the cashier, I'm engaging in the important work of fat activism. Let's see what else. This is really, this is uh, beautiful. <laughs> And it can involve changing laws, but it can also involve having a conversation with somebody or wearing something good. And sometimes it's about refusal of dominant cultural values, and sometimes it's really, really ambiguous. Some fat activists try and draw lines about what is and what isn't fat activism. But I think that kind of ideological purity is completely overrated. And I'm interested in those kind of hybrids um, that people develop for themselves and kind of try and draw in to make livable lives. Um, my fat activism is a part of my daily life. I don't Correct. put on a As uniform or an outfit well. or something special to do it. Right. Or go somewhere. Me too. Um, it's really embedded in the way that I think about things, Indeed. the work that I do, the yes. people I know. Yes. It's there in how I walk and how I talk. Yes. And I don't see much separation between activism and life. Right. Um, okay. You can think of it as a kind of consciousness. Yes. Um. Sometimes I do stuff that's more recognisable as activism. Oh, so is it good? I make things. Yes. I make zines, which are small homemade publications. Okay. Like this one, which I have for free. You can have a copy <laughs> afterwards if you want. And sometimes I write and publish things, like my book, and I've published stuff in... Well, I'm on, on sitting on the board for the, the Fat Studies Journal. It's an interdisciplinary journal of body weight and society. There's a mouthful for you. Well, how do you get in and that? And contribute to... 
books like the Fat the Fat Studies Reader, okay. and also our own beautiful Fat Studies in the UK, which Karina co-edited. So I do stuff that is activism, and sometimes my activism is very small and subtle. Can be something like breathing, or <laughs> or thinking, or um. Hold on. This woman just said her fat activism was the act of breathing. <laughs> that she could just be somewhere breathing and she's being an activist. Isn't that, isn't that sort of proving that being fat isn't healthy if breathing is activism? Aren't you giving away the game there a bit? If you know, my fat activism sometimes is very simple. It's slow breathing or getting out of a chair. Doesn't that suggest that being overweight is potentially <laughs> unhealthy? I'm no doctor, neither is Rhonda Patrick, but I still think that there's something about breathing as activism that denotes probably not the healthiest lifestyle. But again, what do I know? But all right, let's, we, we've had enough. Thank you. We get, we kind of get it now. It's everything. It's nothing. It's breathing. It's winking at people. Whatever you want to do. Plus size models sent death threats by fat activists after dieting. This is what I like. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I like. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. I like a fat person threatening to kill a f another fat person who's started to get thinner. That, to me, is an interesting type of person and one that I want to know more about. The person that Rosie Mercado, who used to be a size 24 and is now a size 12 to 14, still fat, right? Good. Was told to jump off a bridge and kill herself by people <laughs> with people who objected to her slimming down. The 36-year-old told TMZ, I got hate mail. Not so much from other models, just fans that hated on me. Wow. They hated the thought that I was really public about my weight loss and I was losing weight. She lost more than 170 pounds. Some people love being overweight. Some people don't. That's what she says. I think it's a personal choice, but people were not happy. They were sending her threatening... They were threatening, they were telling her to kill herself. Oh, she was 410 pounds, too. She was 410 pounds, and then she got, and she lost 170 pounds. Well, she's down to 170 now, yeah. No, go up. Oh, wow, she's 170. Wow, good for her. She went from four, no, 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 <laughs> no, no good for her. No. You skinny piece of shit. She's a Benedict Arnold. There is a movement of fat activists that do activism by breathing. Heavily, yes. But she's... I can't believe you would say that and be so heartless. The people that loved her as a 410-pound model... Want her to kill herself and jump off a bridge because she's now down to 170. The only reason I'm not afraid of that is people are telling me to kill myself anyway. <laughs> They're saying it now.